Hey everyone, welcome to Architecture for Thought. I recently gave a lecture at the University of Toronto for an architecture class focused on generative design thinking and workflows. This video is an excerpt from my presentation that suggests methods for combining currently available AI tools to develop design processes or exercises that may help you become more familiar working with AI in architecture. So let's jump right in. I categorize these experimental approaches into five workflows, but you'll see there's a lot of overlap in the use of synthetic image generation and ChatGPT since those are the primary AI tools available right now. So we have componentized digital fabrication, scripted installation, automated attribute application, reverse prompt engineering, and virtual environmental design. With all of these workflows, my goal was either to develop a process that may eventually be used to fabricate architecture or assist in the architectural documentation process. Starting with componentized digital fabrication. This is a 2D image to 3D model to 3D print workflow. And this, as the title suggests, this workflow leans heavily on 3D printing, CNC milling, or any other form of digital fabrication to produce the final product. Everyone's familiar with the traditional architectural project phases, which include concept design, engineering, construction documents, and then traditional construction techniques. But this proposed emergent workflow attempts to improve the relationship between concept design and final product by extracting AI-generated imagery as a digital 3D model, which can then be analyzed structurally and immediately 3D printed. This workflow also offers a unique opportunity to reimagine how architectural components may be synthesized or merged together to create unibody parts that eliminate unwanted joints or seams between dissimilar building systems. For instance, in the lower right hand corner of this diagram, I'm showing an enlarged view of a component that functions as part of a composite structural system and also acts as a storefront jam detail. I call this synth texture, but we'll leave that for another presentation. Let's walk through an example of this workflow. This is a prompt for an architectural pavilion. And if you remember at the beginning of this presentation, I emphasized the importance of truth because as you develop prompts, you will need to learn to use natural language very deliberately. Keep in mind these image generators, as amazing as they seem, are still basically models or programs that produce content based on data it was trained on. So I'll read this off the screen. A photorealistic rendering of an architectural open-air pavilion, asymmetrical, double vault structure with arches made of terracotta and clay, modular component assembly, geometric composition, artificially illuminated, accent lighting during a bright foggy sunrise in a grass field with native prairie plantings. And then it has the AR aspect ratio 16 by nine modifier. This prompt was refined through producing hundreds of images, but once you develop something you like, the next challenge is to create a 3D model from that 2D image. One way to approach this is by using depth maps. These allow you to communicate three-dimensional information by mapping lighter tones to objects that are closer to the viewer and darker tones for objects that are farther away. Fortunately, there are also AI-driven tools online to create depth maps for you and allow you to view the final product. And here's an example of that. So this gives us an idea of how the pavilion is starting to feel spatially, but we don't have any digital geometry to fabricate from. There are some companies working on AI tools that can generate 3D models from 2D images or create 3D models directly from natural language text prompting. But again, these programs are only as good as the data it's trained on. So as these tools become more available, they are likely to be better at producing known forms such as furniture pieces, vehicles, or other entourage items rather than unique architectural components. Here's an example of text to 3D by Dream Fusion, and you can see the fidelity of the model is already fairly accurate. So you can imagine what we'll be producing in five or 10 years from now or sooner. I've also seen examples of people converting depth maps into digital meshes using Grasshopper to interpolate the tones in the image as coordinates for a mesh. You can then 3D print that terrain, or you can also use this approach on a CNC milling machine by setting the routing depths to match the image tone based on their value. 
Next, we have scripted installation. This one is a bit more conceptual, taking a 2D image and running it through an image recognition program or using ChatGPT to then write a script for robotic installation. So we start with an image prompt. A parametric white wall with a tunneled opening, architectural model, curvilinear, modular components, stacked, flowing, diagram. And once we get a result we like, we can again use the depth map generator to produce a displacement map. And then jump into ChatGPT. So just as a reminder, these workflows are still very theoretical and most of them don't have proven case studies, but the idea here is to encourage you to think about these processes and how to string them together to eventually create built forms. I asked ChatGPT to write a Python script for a KUKA robot arm to pick up bricks from a stack of 10 by 10 by 10 modular units and place them according to a depth map image of an architectural wall design. And it did. Now, I haven't tested this, but it looks like it's trying to identify all the appropriate steps. And the image is a little blurry on the screen, so I'll abbreviate ChatGPT's response, which was import necessary libraries and assign task variables, initialize the environment and load necessary models or images, load the depth map image and convert it to a 3D point cloud, generate a movement path for the robotic arm based on the position and orientation of the bricks in the stack and the desired position and orientation of the bricks in the wall design, initiate the robotic arm build process and verify movement path to the first brick in the stack, and last but not least, use the robotic arms gripper to pick up the brick and move it to the first position in the wall design. Repeat until wall design is complete. Just to be clear, this next video is only for reference. It's not operating based on this chat GPT script, but it's pretty easy to see how digital fabrication or robotic installation can start to merge earlier into concept design phase of any project. Another approach is to jump straight into toolpath generation using ChatGPT for 3D printing, but when I asked it to generate a G-code for a toolpath for a 3D printed dome structure with a radius of 10 feet and a height of 10 feet, it basically told me, not yet, slow down. Next, we have automated attribute application. This is another conceptual approach with some wish list items that I hope software developers are currently working on. The idea here is to work with a synthetic image generator in our actual 3D model, which already exists, but then have the ability to apply the changes directly to our model. This is an example from Revit using an add-in called Virus by Evolve Lab, which uses a control net based process to maintain the image composition while offering text to image generation. And if you're not familiar with control net, it's a behind the scenes extra step that image generators can use to recognize patterns or geometry in an image, either by detecting canny edges, automating depth maps, or using a number of other recognition methods to lock the image composition before generating iterations. What's missing here is the next step, which is applying the content from these 2D generated images directly to our 3D models with parameter controls that allow you to further refine the model's geometry. But when combined with some of the earlier methods I've outlined, you can see that that might be possible in the very near future. Next is reverse prompt engineering. This isn't as much of a workflow as it is an exercise that I think is critical for architects and designers to practice moving forward while collaborating with AI. This one also leans heavily on my opening comments about how to decipher truth, or in this case, how to communicate precisely with AI to produce more accurate results. This can be done manually through tr trial and error by literally plugging in single words or short phrases into Midjourney and cataloging the results, or you can train a closed data set with your own images and descriptions so that the model can produce images specific to your language. In case you didn't know, the data sets used to train the current image generators is available to browse, 
and you can search specific words to see how the AI models were trained to respond. This is Layon, a large scale AI open network used for machine learning and is available to the general public. But again, something to think about is how to use available image recognition and object detection tools to identify scenes or unique geometries so that results can be more reliable. This is a prompt I wrote to try and identify the scene to see if I could recreate the image in mid-journey, and it was actually pretty difficult. So here's my recreation, but I did end up using the original image as a reference in combination with this prompt to create it. Last but not least, we have virtual environmental design. And this is also not necessarily a workflow, but it could be used as a tool to advance architectural design and documentation. It's essentially synthetic image generation for 360 virtual reality views, but also with the ability to modify specific attributes of the environment. There's already some amazing programs out there that allow you to generate seamless 360 panoramic views with only a text prompt. So here's a prompt I plugged into Skybox Lab. A curvilinear, sinuous, flowing, futuristic living room with curvy mud, adobe, clay walls, skylights, ambient lighting, accent lighting, large windows to a prairie with landscaping, and illuminated pool on a sunny morning with fog. And this is what it generated. Pretty amazing. But to take it a step further, you can export the equirectangular panoramic image, plug it into Stable Diffusion using Control Net, and generate design options that hold true to the image geometry. Thanks for tuning in, and I'd love to continue the conversation with anyone who's still listening. So please leave any questions you have in the comment section below. I'll also provide links in the video description to all of the AI tools I referenced in this presentation. See you next time.